across the border. Oh, hi. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. I see they've got the same northern lights in Scotland as they do in, in many places across the world. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've got three others coming in. Um, but I'm not sure. Am I hearing myself on the feedback? Maybe if we mute ourselves or something, perhaps we get that feedback. Here, I'll just. Um, hello, my name is Elijah Ignatieff of the new Paradigm Toolkit. And what this is is a test group for a product coming out called the Remedy Oracle. And what it is is it's a software system that brings, uh, that answers any question. And so you type in your question, or you can choose a question, or you can divine a question, depending on which route you want to go. If you don't even know what question you want to ask, you can still divine a question will come up, which is pretty interesting. And there's three cards. The first card is a value. The second card is a conversation type. And the third card is a conceptual lens. So these three cards come from a card deck, which I developed called the Conscious Communication Card Set. So these cards are actually uh, physical in form and there's six different decks and the Oracle pulls from all of them. So there's over 400 cards and the card set has not been fully um, completed yet as a package that you can buy, but it is something which uh, I would like to get into the hands of people who are interested in terms of being part of a earlier test group and its main focus again is on conscious communication and what it does is it stimulates you to see something and, and in all my work I've been working on this for about 25 years that most people deep down are more interested in divination I've got systems I've got maps I've got game boards I've got processes I've got all these different things but the the thing that people like the most is is a card reading and the cards are in more of a business language because the actual card set is a holistic business thinking system called the inflow matrix. And it's an operating system. So it's a series of maps that you can have in your mind that you can use to organize any business. But it's also an operating system for something called a shared knowledge community, which is more of a new paradigm organizational structure that is looking to assist people like ourselves who are let's say independent contractors and what we're missing is infrastructure and marketing and so it's it's like we can't do it all so we need something like a corporation that's big and 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 able to do larger things but the focus of the corporation is different from the focus of the shared knowledge community so this is the first tool in software to come out and uh might as well just start right away and so i'll i'll share the screen and show you what it is and we'll jump right in with each of you getting to ask a question okay so just let me get the screen um wait a second Okay, so can you see the screen? Let's choose a remedy. So there's write a question, pick a question, divine a question. So why don't we start off uh, with you, Lee, and why don't you ask a question? Okay, so I'm just gonna ask you the question, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, Can I free myself from the deep insecurities? I think I would just put a how in there. Okay. Um, Okay, so it doesn't connect to me if I put it in the eye.
Okay. So do you want me to read it out or would you like to read it out? Am I just reading these? Um, yeah. Value. So the va yeah, oh, go ahead, sorry. Imitation, definition to value the copying of patterns of activity and thought of other groups or individuals. Value lens. Convo type, intention, marketing conversation, team follow-up to make follow-up contact with a prospect with more than one person. And how do I see this one? Because my screen has got you guys over the other lens. Oh. Ah. Change, definition, the ability to move from one state, form, belief, and or field to another. Choice lens. Hmm. Okay, so it starts off with you answering your question using those words. And then when you've gone through what you feel as if uh, your own process, then it goes to the group for us to give insights, intuitions, or feedback. Um, and that's utilizing the mastermind. So uh, would you like to go ahead? So for me to answer my own question, like uh, as if I'm drawn to one of these One of these circles. Yeah. Um, I guess I was drawn to the choice lens. The ability to move from one state or form, belief and or field to another. So it feels as if I, if I don't, change something about my perspective, then I continue to experience these insecurities in this way that I experience them. Um, and the stories that I have with them that I believe to be true. I need to move away from something. What does the imitation mean for you? Um, I guess the imitation for me when I read the definition. Um, makes me think that there, well, there are other people that um, are free of these insecurities and they do something or they have a different perspective or do something differently that makes their experience different. And then the team follow up. Hmm. Um, all that's really coming to mind when I look at that is it seems to take the attention away from where I felt very personal about something to this being something that's removed from me. Uh, it feels like a doing process, something that I'm gonna be doing with other people focusing on something specific. I don't know what that is. Okay, and then if, if you feel like you've come as far as you can go, then you can open it to the group. Mm -hmm. And then Alice, uh, do you have any insights, intuitions or questions which 
you, you see right now? I, I was more drawn to um, looking at the colours of each of the, the, the circles. So when you were looking at the change um, and looking at the ability to move from one state, form, belief and or field to another, I was very much drawn to the blue and going to the chakra systems um, and thinking about how how you would go through that change and looking at um, feeling stuck in speaking out um, to help you move forward with it and finding the right platform or the right support to be able to communicate for that help to come to fruition. So it's all about the, the communication side of things and being able to find your own inner voice to speak up. Um, and then you went to imitation to value the coping of patterns of activity and thought of other groups or individuals. Now I'm very much aware of the background icon in the middle of the circle um, with, with a number of pathways, if you like, coming from it which basically says to me that there's not one particular place or one specific area. It's about you exploring what feels right and the right modality, again, finding the right people in the right group to support you, but also being very much drawn to the green. The green for me, again, going to the heart chakra, being the green colour and looking at, um, obviously you've told me a little bit about you in the beginning, but um, for me, the green in the heart chakra is about healing from a broken heart um, and taking the time to, to find um, the right way to heal from that broken heart. But also, again, from there, it's about the care and support you have as an individual. Because green's obviously where you would go to for caring, like the first aid sign is a green cross. So for me, it's a caring colour as well. So it's about you finding the right care and support, but also looking at what care, um, basically your own internal system about what you've actually got to give to yourself, self-care, and how you can work with these other groups or find the right support, but also do the inner work on yourself. And ultimately that will help bring you up and out um, to the right place. And then the team follow up to make follow up contact with a prospect with more than one person. Um, so this for me, it's it's the red for me is the grounding um, and the, the red chakra, the root chakra, sorry, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and for me, this is about you. Um, once, once you're in a stronger position for yourself, knowing that you're in a stable place, you've got that foundation within yourself and your insecurities have lessened um, because you know foundationally you're in a good strong place but through through the different contacts you've made and through finding your inner voice from the previous work that you've been doing that you're now in a strong position to actually have a go-to person or the person that you feel that you can trust the most to help you um, when you have any doubts or any, anything starts creeping back into your mind but at the same time, they'll help you overcome any challenges going forward and you will get there. Thank you. That's great feedback. Um, I, I, I would say like the team follow-up to me is kind of linked into what we're doing here in terms of a mastermind where I really believe that we all need a mastermind. We need like a weekly mastermind with people that we meet with that are specifically focused on helping each other solve each other's problems and getting feedback around certain things. And I think a lot of insecurities we have is sometimes we just don't have people to talk with at the level that we need or want. And just like hearing from Alice, there's people who have, you know, brilliant insights into our, ourselves. And, and we can only get that when we're in a structure or form that sort of allows for it. And that's, that's one of the main purposes of what this is going to be. And um, to have that sort of, other people around that we, you know, we, I think we best learn through imitating. 
and seeing people around who, let's say, may not have the insecurities, it, it can sometimes give us strength to be around people who are who are showing us, modeling for us how to be a certain way. And no matter what, change has to be involved. And so if you look at the green intention and, and blue attention, the idea is that the first word is intention and the second word and the third word is where you focus your mind with attention. So you're looking at the answer at change. So you're looking at, well, what has to change either within me or outside of me and then the, the conversation is it's not just you it has to involve other people it has to involve a team that is you know sort of has that intention in mind and again imitation is uh the best form of flattery right is is like when we really find something that we like we tend to imitate it so mm -hmm. um so this is this the beginning of, of a spell that you can use continually like it's something which I mean, we don't have the save as buttons yet, but you can take a, a picture of it with your phone. Um, hopefully uh, write it down and that this becomes something which you sort of build a spell book each mm -hmm. week or each day. You, you sort of ask different questions and, and and it's a way of thinking in terms of the way these spells act. So do you feel complete in, in this one? Yeah, it's a um, really interesting process. Okay, so we'll we'll go again. And Alice, it's your turn. What question do you got? Um okay. Well can you ask timing questions? Timing questions? Like time, when, time, time questions. Well, give me the question and let me, let me hear it and see. Um, I was going to ask when, if, no, how can I word this? Um, Okay, will, will I successfully start my coaching business and when? Could that be another how question? How can I successfully begin my coaching business? Um, yes, yeah. All right, okay. Ah. Interesting. Okay, so would you like to go through it? Okay, so integrity to value being in alignment with your whole value system. Logistical infrastructure conversation, logistical, the planning, implementation, and coordination of resources for an activity, and research. I can't read what that says in the middle. Um, I can, I'll read it for you. Uh, the subsystem that investigates fields to discover the potential to improve choice, flow, synergy, and harmony. Okay. So now answer the question using all three. Um, okay, I'm very much drawn to the middle first, um, the logistics, um, planning, implementation, and coordination of resources for an activity. Um, interestingly, I'm very much drawn there because I've already started that process. Um, so I have invested in some business coaching of my own to understand how it works, how I can plan it out. And 
what I need to do in order to implement it in the long term. Um, so that feels right. And then looking at the intention part, intentionally I am doing this and it is where my attention is at the moment. Um, and a lot of it is about me finding my voice. So, so that's probably the right starting point for me. Um, the research part, I would say, would probably be next for me. Um, so what's interesting, because I have such a diverse background and skill set, it's about me finding the right niche or the right market to support and serve potential clients in the best way possible. And as it says, they have choice, flow, synergy and harmony. Um, and a lot of that I am relying on going within to align my system to what feels right whilst also researching what markets potentially I can tap into best. And then I'd be drawn to the integrity because by doing the research then I would be aligned and I would best be best placed to serve my clients and offer value to them. So yeah, I think that's that's where I would go. Okay. Uh, Lee, any insights, questions, feedback, intuition? Um yeah, not really in the same way that Alice was looking at the individual things. Um, but for me, it feels as if, um, Alice, you're, you're really already, you know, it's like you're already skilled and it's almost like I see you already doing it and that your clients, um, the whole idea about what your niche and market is to help them, I feel like you'll be attracting the people it's almost like your niche will be revealed because they're going to come to you with whatever it is that you are offering them consciously or not consciously, you know, that, that, that the source that's available within you, that they're going to come and show you. Um, and sometimes that can be a surprise. And It feels as if you have um, you have a that that very sort of logical ability to the way that you were even viewing these um, well we call them cards in front of us with circles but you know even even the way you were seeing them it feels to me as if you you download information really quickly and it's there for you it's 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 like you're tapping into your own wisdom all the time like you already know all this you're just needing to voice it okay thank you um i would say that the integrity is probably the basis of most sort of coaching systems uh where you are teaching a certain type of integrity and it's it, it is it's looking at your whole value system so it, it's like the more aligned you are with your own values and the more you help your clients to align with their values, that's a very powerful thing to do. Uh, logistical is basically, it's, it's the movement of resources. It's like getting everything ready. And it may be that you haven't figured out your schedule. You haven't figured out that, well, on Fridays, that's when I do my power meetings and Tuesdays is when I do my marketing and Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to have three sessions a day set up for my clients. And then I'll do my maintenance on Monday or something like that. I don't know if you've done that, but it, it's a very good thing to do to kind of set up a, a lunar schedule logistically to sort of figure out 
when you're going to do things, uh, researching and might be figuring out, uh, you know, I think Lee was saying, but it's sort of like your, to figure out your niche, you have to understand who you are and you have to understand, you know, what your gifts are and then you have to understand who needs them. And from what you tell me, you've got a lot of intuitive insight, as, as Lee was saying, that is just like sharp there, always going to be there. But it's like you have to create like a package. You have to understand like it, whether it's a thousand dollar package or a two thousand dollar package or a 10, 10 session package. And then each session you're doing something with them that is different, that has value, that is part of your, again, logistical infrastructure, what you're creating for people. So I don't know how much you detail your design on paper, but I would I would suggest that that is uh, like when you really know exactly uh, your timing schedule for your ideal. It may not be exactly what it is right now, but it's it's like aiming at your ideal. And if you go, I want to work with ten clients. I want to make let's say five thousand dollars a month, and I want to work thirty hours a week. You have to be very specific about you know. You haven't got the clients and you got to do marketing. If you haven't uh, figured out your marketing materials and you got to make your marketing materials. So to me, it's, it's a lot to do with coming up with your packaging. Um, and that's what I would say to that. Okay. On that one. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, I haven't, I'm I'm not as far along as that yet, um, but that is on my plan to do to look at um, packaging and understand marketing. So, yeah. So thank you both. Okay, so we'll we'll go again. Uh, we'll do like two, two questions each. So, um, Lee, do you have another question? Mm. Um. Um, how can I, uh, I don't really know how I'm going to word this. It's like, it's like, how do I as an introvert, um, how do I as an introvert, express myself in I guess what, what it feels like to me is it feels like social media or being online, the way that we have to work at the current time. It feels to me like it's a really extrovert place. So how do I as an introvert become visible? Just a little clarification on the question. Um, why do you want to become visible? Um, because potential clients, you know, aren't going to know that I'm there otherwise. Like if I, you know, if I, if I'm not going to make, I can have this idea of wanting, you know, to coach people, but if I'm not going to, you know, if I can't be seen in the first place, no matter how, where I am. Okay, so it's more of a, so how does Lee um, attract the clients you want, right? Yeah, yeah, Deeper yeah. Deeper question. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Um, Want to speak out the cards? Uh, charisma, definition to value a spiritual power or personal quality that gives an individual influence to people. Value then. 
intention, synergy conversation, appreciation, to recognize the quality, value, and significance of someone or something. Potential, what is available in an individual, a moment, an event, a conversation, or a cycle to bring into physical existence. Low lens. Hmm. I kind of feel excited. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just I like the colours. They're all standing out of me. Um, I like the words. Um, how do I attract the clients I want? Um, what's coming to me is I guess there's a there's an appreciation of um, I guess like life situations that we experience and it's like those um, those pain points or that have been pain points that I've come through in my life um where i feel i want to be there for other people so i have an appreciation of where they're at what they're experiencing um where it can feel really dark and a place where they feel lost but i can see the light like the light in them and for them um, which I guess leads on to the potential of um, being able to help individuals um, who, it's like I see a staircase in life and it's like, you know, I can put my hand back on the staircase and help people forward and other people do that for me. It's like a constant flow of energy. Um, And charisma wow that gets hard for me because I don't know it's sort of in that way of looking at myself um which I feel difficult but would be something other people would tap into is there something about me they connect with um or they like or appreciate about who I am and I am who I am through those experiences I've been through. So the clients are out there. Um, the potential? Yeah, well, I guess I sort of was thinking that in before, like the potential is that, that they are out there because these life circumstances that I've been through happen to many people and we experience all sorts of challenges and grief and um, but the potential for me is really only there if I begin to have conversations with people otherwise they don't know I'm there so I've got to actively do something, you know, I have to step, I have to step up and have conversations and, um, or even, or even notice that the conversations that I have, I always have this thing within me where it's like, I've done something for so long. I've helped people naturally for so long and not, and not made money from it. And now I've reached this point in life where like, you know, something needs to change. And so I struggle in that aspect of um, charging for something that it's like, I haven't got a tangible good that I'm selling. Um, so it feels hard for me to uh, sell a service that I'm giving, which can be life changing or even life saving as it has been in some, in some cases. Um, Do you have a business card? 
No. Can I suggest one thing as a start? Mm -hmm. Create a business card. Okay. The big step between, it's like hanging a sign on your door, but it's, it's like, you need a business card to go, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and until you make that business card, it's, it's not really official yet. It's, it's, a, it's sort of like the most inexpensive thing you can do to get going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alice, do you have any feedback, insights, intuition about? So, you know, it's interesting because as Lee was speaking, initially my, my thought process was following Lee's and then somewhere along the line it changed. So I was very much drawn to the potential first um, and looking at a wider or broader view in terms of where your clients are. So the definition is asking what is available in an individual, a moment, an event, a conversation or cycle. So it, it's tapping into areas without having to put yourself in an awkward position, but still being um, in the same space, if you like, as to where potential clients would be. So you're looking at it through a lens. You're starting to feel comfortable within the environment, albeit an online environment um, and starting to gauge what areas, what groups, what people, what situations feel right for you. And as that comes more into fruition and you become more and more engaged in it, you're starting to naturally feel a connection with those areas, which is then leading into the charisma area where you're actually coming into your own. Again, you're having that heart centered chakra. You're starting to have that attachment with actually I can really help these people and vice versa. So that's where the conversations start to come in, but through your own um, your own qualities, as it's in there in the definition, your personal quality and bringing in your spiritual realm to that conversation, that's leading to the engagement and the appreciation between you and the other people within that space. Um, where you're able to then take that conversation intentionally in a direction that's required to support your need and whilst helping them. And then that's where the value piece comes in and you're, you're closing that gap and creating the, the connection to take forward what's needed. Um, and you're doing it at a pace and a level that's comfortable in the areas where you've been feeling around. So it's not that you've been thrown in at the deep end, you're still in control to a point um, until you feel ready to take that conversation to the next place. And so there's a mutual appreciation. Thank you, Alice. Awesome. Um, I would say like the appreciation convo is, is a very, like there's 72 conversation types and appreciation is one of them, but it's it's probably one of the best ones, right? We all love to be appreciated. And it, it's quite a, a skill, I think, to truly appreciate people, let's say online, where you're looking at, let's say, attracting some people. So let's say you're in some social media. And, you know, I know in the um, another group I'm in that is the spiritual awakening group or something like 200,000 people, and there's people always are asking questions there. And you get hundreds of comments but like to truly appreciate the potential of somebody to see like i think alice kind of is 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 tapping into your potential and i think alice has a skill to do that and so to appreciate what you see in other people all around you and to i think when you tap into that sort of higher positive vibe your charisma naturally comes out because it's, it's you're extending yourself in, in, a, in a very sort of warm way to people. And I, I think that people need that. They need to be appreciated. They need someone to see their potential. They need to have the coach draws that out. And I think that you're, sounds like you're looking to help people more with grieving and going through sort of more processes of, during a, a early in their healing journey. Um, so it's understanding kind of where somebody's at and then bringing in uh, the ability to see where they could go. And again, seeing this as a kind of like a spell or something that, you know, it takes practice and takes, takes um, you focusing attention upon it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah. so mm -hmm. go to the last question. And Alice, what, what, you, what do you have for us? Um, do you know, it's, it's, I'm not sure. <laughs> my, my question was going to be similar to what Lee's just asked, but in answering Lee through my own intuition, I've answered my own question. <laughs> um, so how can I think of another question? Um, Uh, I suppose, so, so for me, um, it's about narrowing down, although I've got ideas, but it is about, there, there's two, two parts to this. One is about marketing strategies and the other is about honing into the right niche or what my primary niche would be. Um, so I don't know if I can ask what what's the best way to... What's the best marketing strategy to... to happen to my niche. That, what is Alice's best strategy to attract her primary niche? Yes. Yes. That sounds... Okay. That's an interesting one. So we have safety, the state of being safe, freedom from the appearance of risk or injury, danger or loss, operations conversation, reporting, a conversation that gives the results when work has been done or not done, and cost the price paid to acquire, produce, accomplish, or maintain anything. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. My best strategy. Could you say what your primary niche is or is that another question of of if you don't know your primary niche, it's hard to figure to understand. Um, yeah, so the, the interest in, so, so initially, before I started um, working through business coaching, my uh, simplistic way of looking at it was, I've got two main groups corporate clients where I can go in and look at leadership and talent management and spiritual clients where I can offer a number of modalities and spiritual teaching and practice. However, when I've started going through the business models, it's looking more in detail. So, for example, looking at um, small businesses or solopreneurs that are looking to start or, or take their business off, but looking at it from a, a profiling perspective or looking to help um, people advance in their career in a corporate setting and in a spiritual setting, it was more looking at how I can support people reach their true potential. Or another area that came up was working with women who had maybe gone through a divorce or a breakup um, and how they can 
find the confidence to stand up on their own two feet um, and make a go of their own business without the security of a relationship. So I actually created a number of other areas out with my main simple thoughts on it. So oh. I'm still toying around with what's right. Okay. Okay. Given that, um, what do you see in front of you? How do you, how do you interpret those? If I'm looking at it logically, I've, I've already put cost to it to go through business coaching myself um, to help me get specific, if you like, and know what I'm doing. Um, the reporting part of that would come in because of the support that's available to me through the business coaching and where I'm at in terms of progression. And the safety part would come in because I've not actually put myself out there yet and I still have the business coaching to fall back on and a support network there. So yeah, but, you, like, but, you, but you want to remember, like, what is Alice's best strategy to attract her primary niche? That's the reference point for these three cards. Right. So my best strategy then is the conversation, having a conversation with the right people to move things forward and know how I'm doing it. where I still have that safety net, but in a supportive and progressive way. And then when I'm ready and have got the niche, the primary niche, I know exactly where to go, what the costs will be in terms of the marketing plan and how to move that part forward for onboarding. So yeah, reporting, safety, then cost. Okay, Lee, do you have an insight? Um, well, I get a bit caught up with this word strategy as sort of like a, almost like a word that I'm not so fond of. So it's where I'm coming from. But when I was looking at these and Alice is talking it's just, again, it's like just a feeling that's coming and it feels as if, Alice, you're really good at that business side of it. It's like, that's where maybe a lot of your time has been invested, but it feels as if you're coming out of that corporate thing, very drawn with this spiritual side of you. And it's almost as if that, that cost is like, there's that, the safety in what you know in that kind of business structure and that corporate world and what you could offer those clients mm -hmm. and that sort of juxtaposition but actually you, you come out of there and you're you're deeply spiritual and and I mean it feels like you're just like downloading information and you speak really succinctly and you know you're just delivering it um with what, is, what, what, what sounds like you've got lots and lots of other skills that you've been developing in that area. I mean, they seem so sort of like polar opposite. And I guess there's a, in some respect, I don't know, the word like cost comes up for me. Is it a cost to, is it a cost to you? Do you go into that field that you already know and speak about those things reporting in the way that you already know? And that is your safety net because it's so, you know, it's, it's, um, 
Mm. How would you describe this? It's like it's a it's a known territory. It's you know it very well. And then this other side that you're really spiritual, and there'll be all sorts of people out there. But but maybe the niche isn't clear. They you know that they're you you're you're becoming clearer on that niche that you just talked about about um, perhaps women divorced. Uh, broken up relationships and, and finding their feet with their own businesses and being able to go forward is a very different thing coming from it from your sort of spiritual way with them yeah it, you know it's so interesting um i haven't looked at it that way before because interestingly although i talk about corporate and that's my safety it is my safety area i I've been a spiritual practitioner and teacher, if you like, for probably the same length of time I've worked in corporate. Wow. It's not a new thing for me, but mm. I've always looked at it as, I suppose, a bit out there and not the main earner, which mm. probably isn't the right view. When I think about how much time I've dedicated to both areas throughout my life, span. yeah, and how much we've invested, yeah, yeah. Um, where where the 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 niching down um, with the just using the 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 women who have went through a breakup um, actually was born out of trauma that I've had, yeah, um, cool. in my own past. Well, mm. an area I can relate to, but knowing that spiritual modalities would be a good coaching mm. position to support yeah. that particular market. Um, but again, that's why I'm a bit, is it, is it, mm. isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I would say what comes to me is you should probably have two websites, one that's specific that's corporate languaging and one that's specific to the individual around more spiritual practices and to distinctly differentiate those because they don't usually mix. And I think if you try to mix sometimes strategies, you want to have your niche means it's a niche. It means it's very specific. And so you want to create sort of language, like a promo, a promo video for one and a promo video for another, both. And, and then having... Uh, I don't, do you have a price sheet yet? Do you have a price sheet for your um, services? No, that's part. It's it's part of the the pro, the business program I'm going through. Um, I'll be covering that within the next two or three weeks, but not yet. Um, I've not got a full a full. Okay, because together I, yet. Okay, because I mean, the reporting the cost, I mean, clients feel very good when they know exactly what they're getting into. And so it's, like, it's almost like, again, having two menus, one that's specific to your corporate clients and one that's specific to your personal clients, and then have the list of, you know, here's here's a one my one-shot deal, here's uh, four programs, and here's eight weeks. Like, however, you're going to break down what you're offering and then with a price beside it. And that's sort of reporting the cost, right? So if you have a, a website with your price sheet on it, mm -hmm. another website with price sheet, that's the two basics that the clients will look at when you're negotiating your, your contract with them. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So there you go. You had a, a taste of it. And the idea is to have, and I'm not quite sure, I was thinking eight uh, plus the facilitator. And you saw how easy it is. You basically just ask the question, pop it in. So the business side of this is looking to find people who want to sort of do what I'm doing. And the idea was maybe to charge $25. And eight times 25 is $200. And so as a facilitator in, in about an hour and a half, um, you know, that's that's the aim. And I think if, if people, I think people all need a mastermind. So one of the hopes is to sort of perhaps attract six more people that are, again, I think spiritual entrepreneurs are more 
that they're a certain type of mindset, right? And so I, I think that you want to be with people that are of that mindset. And so to have a, a full mastermind group and then to see what it's like, because this is just getting the insights from two people. But if you get the insights from eight people, like that's, that's a very intelligent group. And then if you meet weekly and then you see how that works, and then if you feel like you wanted to, then you would do the same thing. Um, and then you would use the remedy to with a group of eight people. And it's, it's a basic business. I mean, most people are trying to make a, you know, 100, 200 bucks an hour with their coaching. And what this does is it gives you a niche and it allows your own intuition and your ability just to come out. But basically, you're just setting up a container, inviting people in, get them to test it. And then if they like it, then at some point you, you start to create these teams. And so that's one of the things I'm looking at. But I also have uh, a lot of other tools. I have maps, card sets, game boards, processes, and software, all in something called the New Paradigm Toolkit. So I'm looking for teachers and facilitators who uh, would like to participate. And all the tools integrate with one another, and they can all be integrated into whatever coaching practices that you have. So it's, it's something I've been, again, working on for 25 years, and I've, I've, I'm just now bringing it into the world. So <laughs> um, I understand a lot of the pitfalls <laughs> around why we don't go forward. Uh, I pretty much had every block that you had at some point. So any feedback you'd like to give on the experience? I just thought it was, I mean, first of all, sort of having absolutely no concept, no expectations, nothing, just arriving kind of, you know, well, wow, I'm going to come with a question. You know what you mean? I could ask any question. You know, it was just this like anything. <laughs> um, it's been fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, it's been a really, really enjoyable experience. And uh, I could really see the benefits like you're saying. I mean, people come with, different levels of intuition and perspective and life experiences and everything that feeds into into this and yeah it just it would just be like going away with a you know a basket full of goodness yeah it's amazing really really interesting experience thank you you must have an incredible mind elijah <laughs> a lot of persistence alice um you know i agree with lee um it's, it's been a really interesting evening for me. Um, and again, I was a bit like, oh, I get to ask a question. <laughs> um, how does it work? I, I came in not knowing what to expect um, and how much or, or what the differences would be from doing a typical three-card spread. Now I've looked at, at what 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 you've done and you can see the, the amount of work you've put into it. Um, and yeah, I think it's a very interesting concept and it would be interesting to see how that evolves um, and how your lifetime worth of work actually can come into the public realm, if you like. So yeah, no, definitely. Very mm. interesting. Well, I have huge gratitude for you two for stepping into something without knowing what it was. I will send you a gift called the Conversational Killers. It's it's a little card set of 30 cards that you can print out. I'll send you PDFs. And they're all the ways that humans can stop and break conversations. And it's something from a coaching point of view that it, I do with people. And it's just something which I'll give you the printer you can send out to potential clients. Because I think that gifting it's a good way to start, right? If you get a lot of value and you experience it, then it's you're, you're more open to participate in more of a, a business relationship if, if you're getting value first. And that's at least what I would like to do with the New Paradigm Toolkit is to give a lot of value and then show that it's going to continue as you participate deeper into the process. So I will send that to you okay. through your email. And then we can just, uh, through emails or, or Facebook Messenger, discuss further actions if you want to participate. Uh, in, in what's going forward. And uh, I mean, one goal would be to create a mastermind group where you two would be with six others mm -hmm. and see what it's like to, to, I think we need weekly mastermind groups. Um, yeah, I am um, just slightly different, but um, I was part of a, or started, you know, like a power of eight healing group. 
and we met weekly. And so the experience of meeting weekly and having eight people was really good. You know, I mean, just the, the, the build up of the, you know, sort of the group itself and, and what came up for people. And it really was a valuable experience for everybody, whether they were giving or receiving or, you know, it's, it was really good. So, yeah, I think and I, I agree. I think we do. We need mastermind classes and it's a fabulous way of um, helping each other on. OK, well, again, thank you very much for participating. Um, I'll send you this video just so you can take a look at it. And I'm hoping to have your permission just to kind of put it on the web and be able to show people what it is. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll just let you take a look and, and see how you feel. Hopefully it's OK. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very glad to meet you both. Thank you. And I look forward to meeting you in the future. Sure. Yeah. Nice it's to meet cool. you, Alan. Thank you. Yes. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.